I'm Scott with BibleStudying.net, and we're just continuing our study on the history of the early church, changes between the apostolic church era of the first and second centuries, and even up to the end of the in the third century, and the church that's happened since the third and fourth centuries, let's say, um, that, that continues through the Reformation to modern times. And we're particularly focusing now on theological differences between the earliest church and the church that's gone on since the fourth century. And we were just talking about the ideological competitors, the other religious ideas that were there in, that around the early Christian culture with a non-Messianic Judaism there, uh, and then also on the other side, Gnosticism or Greek religions. And so um, let's take a look at some of the most prominent forms of Greek religions that were there uh, with Gnosticism, uh, and that, that would be uh, Platonism or Neoplatonism as it came to be called, um, which was the predominant worldview of the Greeks at that time. So let's let, look at some quotes from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Neoplatonism, the last school of Greek philosophy, given its shape in the 3rd century AD uh, as one of the great philosophical and religious genius uh, of the school of Plotinus. Plotinus was one of the, the leaders of the 2nd and 3rd century uh, adaptation or updating of Neoplatonism. But as it says here, Neoplatonists, like Plotinus, simply considered themselves to be Platonists. Uh, they were just uh, people who followed the religious philosophies of Plato. Uh, from Wikipedia, Neoplatonism, any form, uh, a form of mysticism. Neoplatonism can be described as a uh, type of dynamic pantheism. So Neoplatonism, Greek religion at this time, was pantheistic, which means that they believed that God was all and all was God. Um, and so directly or indirectly, everything is brought forth by the one. That's a term they use for God. In all... in in it, in the one, all things have their being and are divine. God is all in all. Neoplatonists believed in the pre-existence and immortality of the soul. Uh, and it says the, the most pure and holy souls would dwell in the highest regions. Um, and then it talks about how uh, there can be reincarnation into new bodies, perhaps into animal forms. A soul which has returned to the one receives, uh, achieves union with the cosmic universal soul and does not descend again. Uh, and so that's a part of the Neoplatonic view. This is from Britannic. It says, uh, under Platonism, Neoplatonism is the modern name given to a form of Platonism developed by Plotinus in the 3rd century. It represents the final form of Greek philosophy. A certain Gnostic tone or coloring sometimes may be discerned in the theology of Plotinus. Uh, and then it just talks about uh, further about uh, Greek philosophy and religious philosophy at that time. This is from Columbia Encyclopedia. It says, Neoplatonism. The Neoplatonic cosmology had religious overtones. Uh, and so we'll go on from there. And so we can see some components of Platonism and, and uh, the religious uh, system of the Greeks at that time. And during the first three centuries of Christianity, there were uh, many attempts made. There was an attempt made uh, to merge this Greek mystical religious system called Platonism or Neoplatonism uh, with Christianity, or at least to discuss these pagan ideas in terms of Christian, or using New Testament terminology, let's say. And so this blending of Neoplatonism, of Greek mystical religion, with Christianity is called, or came to be called, Gnosticism. As we can see, there's a clear relationship between Neoplatonism and Gnosticism. The word Gnosticism comes from the Greek word gnosis, meaning knowledge. And so both Neoplatonism and Gnosticism have a lot of the same elements. Let's read some quotes here. Um, Britannica says, Gnostics could conceive of salvation as attainable only by escaping the earthly prison. That's part of the Neoplatonic concept, that we are trapped in our material existence and we need to escape uh, to a heavenly existence. Uh, Wikipedia under Gnosticism says, um, Greek gnosis, syncretistic, that is a blended religious system that tries to get elements from various religions and put them together, in this case, Neoplatonism and Christianity. Syncretistic religious movements in antiquity, teaching that humans are divine souls trapped in a material world created by an imperfect god called the Demiurge, uh, who is a distinct creator god. This god is commonly referred to as the Demiurgos, which is used in the Platonist tradition. The Gnostic Demiurge bears resemblance to figures in Plato's Timaeus and Republic. Like Plato, Gnosticism presents a distinction between the highest and unknown or alien god and the Demiurge creator of the material. In many Gnostic systems, God is known as the One. That's the same term that the Platonists use. The earliest origins of Gnosticism include influence from Plato and Middle, middle Platonism. It also included elements or incorporated elements of Christianity and Platonism as it grew. 
Uh, it says Gnostics attempted an effort towards conciliation with late antique philosophy. Again, that's Greek Platonism that they're talking about. And they, Gnostics borrow a lot of ideas and terms from Platonism. So uh, Gnosticism, this next quote here is from Britannica again. The origins of the Gnostic worldview uh, are sought by scholars in the allegorical idealism of middle Platonic philosophers, but it was only with the rise of Christianity that Gnostic syncretism came into full expression. The Gnostic revelation is distinguished from Christian revelation because Gnostic revelation is not rooted in history or transmitted by scripture. It is rather the intuition of the mystery. The world is alien to God, the Gnostic sects of the second century made use of Hebrew and Christian writings in employing an allegorical method to extricate Gnostic meanings from them. Uh, the, it says, the expansion of Gnosticism into the Hellenistic world under the influence of Platonic philosophy, which it borrowed uh, the doctrine of a lower demiurge who was responsible for the creation of the world. Thoroughly Hellenized and Christianized, uh, Gnosticism sometimes comes very near to the views of Middle Platonism. So there we can see that the blending of Neoplatonism with Christianity in Christian terms, where the attempt to find Neoplatonism in Christian literature using allegorical methods, is known as Gnosticism. And they had particular beliefs. The Gnostics denied that Jesus, Christ, that Jesus of Nazareth was the same being as the Christ. Instead, they believed that the Christ was a divine being that joined himself to the human Jesus, um, so they believed that they were distinct. They did not believe that the divine Christ be actually became incarnate as a man. Um, they did not believe, uh, they, and they believed and taught that the God of the Old Testament was different from the God of the New Testament. So uh, apostolic, uh, the apostolic church's resistance and refutation of Gnosticism actually begins in the New Testament itself, and then it continues with the early church. So let's see if we can't read through some uh, New Testament information against Gnosticism, the, the incorporation of Platonic and pagan religious philosophy into Christianity. Uh, Paul and Timothy instructs Timothy uh, to keep what had been handed down to the churches by the apostles, and instead to turn away from something he calls knowledge falsely so-called, and in the Greek that's the word gnosis, falsely so-called gnosis. And so he says, keep which has been committed to you, and avoid the oppositions of, of gnosis, falsely so called, which some have professed and have erred from the faith. So according to Paul, this school of Gnosticism, which he's going to describe later, and we'll see more in the New Testament, is an error in the faith. It's an error. It's not correct. John in his epistles also warns about Gnosticism and their teachings, their denial that Jesus was the Christ, that uh, the Christ had become incarnate in the flesh, that the God of the Old and the New Testament were the same. Uh, and he uses and identifies these schools of thinking with antichrist, with deception, with false teaching. And so he's relating these uh, statements back to Jesus' teaching that we have to remain in Jesus' own teaching rather than go along with these new teachings from these others. And so I'm going to read from John here. Actually, uh, we're kind of running out of time. Let me see here. 1 John 2, he says, As you have heard that the Antichrist will come, even now there are many Antichrists. Who is a liar that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He says, Let there that abide in you that which you have heard from the beginning, that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, so shall you continue in the Son and in the Father. Concerning them that seduce you, he says, even as it has been taught to you, you shall abide in, in him, abide in him. Abide in Jesus' teachings. Don't go with these other people teaching these Gnostic views of Jesus. Uh, 1 John 3 says, keep my commandments. Uh, and if you keep my commandments, you will dwell within him and, and, and he in him. But he says, don't believe every spirit. Try the spirits. There are many false prophets. He says, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and the spirit is of the Antichrist. And then in 2 John 1, uh, he says, uh, what, walk after his commandments. Have you, as you have heard from the beginning, walk in his commandments. There are many deceivers that have come who have not uh, abide in the doctrine of Christ. And he says, if any come unto you and do not bring our teaching, don't let him in your house, which of course means don't let him in your church. So there's John saying, don't let these Gnostics come into your church. So we'll pick up there in just a second when we get back with this uh, in the next segment of our study.